Have I gone crazy? Maybe. So after my last antiques haul on Vinted, I kind of got obsessed with the idea of owning more antiques and starting my own collection. So I went on eBay and things happened. <laughs> RIP my Christmas money. <sighs> the seller packaged those separately. I think maybe that was because she was originally intending to sell them separately, but because I just bought two, they were then um, put into the box like this. Okay, okay, let's just go for this one first. I don't know which is in which, I just know that I bought two hats and I think they're from the 1880s. Holy moly. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, uh, this wasn't a professional antique seller either. Um, I think if I was the seller, I would have stuffed this a little bit um, just to protect it further and not just like squash it together <laughs> like this. But it does look, it does look fine. Um, and I mean, if, it, if this was a professional seller, it would have been more expensive as well. So I'll take it. <laughs> Then let's have a look at what we've got here. Um, technically, you wouldn't call this a hat. This is called a bonnet because it kind of sits on the back of the head and it really is just decorative. There's no um, functionality to it. Based on the pictures that the seller had put online, I kind of figured that this would be 1880s, just um, yeah, judging from the uh shape and how the the lace and everything is kind of uh throning on top and as i mentioned it sits on the back of the head and i think i was right with my uh guess this looks pretty much like what i've seen in fashion plates i can already feel that there's got to be some sort of boning in there um feels like feels like a wire or something um that's along the front and also along the back there are some stitches that I've come undone a bit, but it is all complete, um, nothing falling apart. Even the beading has kept really, really well. This is usually the first thing that will fall apart. And oh, interesting. So this is not just um, sewn on, this is actually on a wireframe. So it keeps the shape a bit better and you can see how it like stands away from um, the bonnet itself. The decoration consists of this um, beading, then we've got some lace in the back and this ribbon, uh, which has like a select structure woven in, um, which has been formed into these loops. Let's have a look at the back. Oh, oh, oh there's even more. <gasps> okay, okay, I see. Um, so this lace has been pleated starting from the center back and sort of fans out over the back of the head and um, the ribbon kind of, well, it runs down towards the side where uh, it ends in those ribbons that um, would be tied around the neck. Yeah, there's a bit of a stone missing here, um, but um, it's not that obvious. I don't think this would be visible at first glance. Oh, this is just such a cute design. It's just, it's just gorgeous. I really, really want to try it on, but I don't know if I should. I mean, it is in very good condition. It's just old and I am very respectful of its age. <laughs> okay, a compromise. I think I'm gonna try it on one of my um, styrofoam heads. We'll see how it looks on there. Ah, don't fall over, please. Oh my gosh. <gasps> This just looks so cute. I can't with this. Oh my gosh. I mean, I don't know if you can probably see this with the contrast, but um, oh, it looks so period. It looks, it looks so authentically 1880s. Um, oh my gosh. 
Okay, I'll move this to the side for a second and we'll have a look at the other one because we've got more to go. So this is a design that I wasn't really able to place um, in terms of date. I would say it's probably from the 80s or 90s as well, um, but I will have to see it. Why is there two? Are these two pieces? Yeah, this is the one that I bought. This, this one I remember. What's the other one then? Oh, we'll look at this later. <sighs> okay, so from what I can see, this looks a bit like what we would call a fascinator in modern age. It consists of this wire construction um, that was then covered in netting and there's this velvet uh, ring all the way around. And here in the front, it, this wire, velvet wire has been shaped into a zigzag shape. Um, and on top, we've got this lovely purple ribbon, a little feather. And I do not know what this is actually. This must be spun from some sort of metal yarn um, combined with other thread. I've never seen something like this before. So I really, really don't know. But yeah, this, mm, maybe this is from the 80s as well. I mean, looking at this, or even the 70s, probably 80s though. So this has a satin ribbon to tie it. I wonder what fiber this is, if this is like a silk satin. Oh, this is so adorable. Um, let me just fetch my other styrofoam head so I can put this on there as well. Yeah, I suppose this would be worn kind of like this. And then those just go down in the back or maybe even further back. I'm really not sure, but um, it looks lovely either way. I think this would have to be tried on um, a hairstyle or I just need to do a bit more research into different fashion plates and see what this reminds me of. Okay then, let's have a look at the mystery package. I do not know what this is because I only ordered two hats. Oh my, this is a third one. This is another bonnet. Oh my goodness, okay. Um, I think this is a lot more fragile. Uh, I can see that the flower decoration is coming off a bit. I didn't order this. <laughs> I did not order this. This has a label in the back. I don't know if I can read this, but it should be possible to see what manufacturer this is from. Made or mode? Mode de? Oh, I can't see. Mode de Paris. Okay, that doesn't say anything. It just says fashion from Paris. Um, that's a bit vague. <laughs> But regardless, I mean, we do love seeing what, where the fashion inspiration comes from, even if I don't know whether this is actually from France or not. Um, considering that the seller was from Vienna, it might be from Vienna. It might also be something that was brought to Vienna from Paris or wherever. We will never know. <laughs> Yeah, so this has um, the lining a bit ripped, but nothing too crazy. It should be possible to, to fix this probably. And yeah, it, it's made of this black straw, which also would need some fixing, but it's holding together surprisingly well. And yeah, it's also got velvet, this time like a mid, midnight blue velvet and um, some feathers on top in black. And I think this is the same lace as this one. Is it? Oh no, it's not. I don't think it is, but it, it does look very similar. Um, the style and the technique is the same as this lace. And we've got some flowers. That is so adorable. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I don't know. What, what did I do to deserve this? Maybe the seller um, just had a third one lying around that she wasn't selling, like the last one, and um, then just gave it to me. I would say this is a really, really good deal. I mean, I paid, I think, 80 euros for this one and 90 for this one which at first glance 
is a lot of money, but then these are from the 1880s. These are really, really old and also um, in fairly good condition. This is a small price to pay for something this gorgeous. Okay, I have one more thing to go through. This is another order that I made through eBay and I got an antique, probably Edwardian parasol. It's a long boy. That's how I know it's the parasol and also because what else would it be? Ooh, okay, so the packaging is fairly simple, but then again, it's a private seller. Um, I'm not expecting anything fancy. As long as it arrives safely, I'm good. So let's have a closer look then. Um, it is fairly long, which is how we can see that it is definitely a bit older. Um, I would say this is Edwardian because it does have this kind of tassel here, um, which I think is extremely Edwardian. I mean, I don't know if this existed in the 20, well, it might have been from the 20s or maybe even 30s, 40s, but to be honest, it's so long. I mean, I'm not an expert on parasols by any means. I'm just hoping that it's an Edwardian. I don't know if it actually is, but I think this could be one with an Edwardian outfit without looking out of place, if you get what I mean. The closure, as you can see here, um, it's got this button closure, which is really, really cute. I've never seen this before, but then again, I've never had an antique parasol so far. Um, so this is the first one. So it's got this uh, fabric band wrapping around and then this little um, metal ring which wraps around the tiny button. Um, and that's how it closes. A bit hard to fit this into the frame. I hope, um, I hope this works. No rips or anything. It looks to be in really good condition. Um, apart from the stains. It's fairly plain in decor, which is really good because that means it matches a lot of different things. Um, it's got this very subtle uh, embroidery with like, what's this, dark, dark brown thread, I would say. And um, it's also got these woven in stripes. Yeah, it looks lovely. And this is really the perfect color to go with most uh, Edwardian dresses. I mean, cream. Cream just really goes with anything and it looks pretty. The handle is fairly plain, but I do like that it has these slight bumps around it. Okay, let's just have a quick look at the inside. From what I can see, this is the exact same construction that uh, one would see on a modern parasol. It's just that everything is made from metal and not of cheap plastic, which we all know causes problems with modern parasols and they always fall apart at some point. Um, so this is in very good condition still. Um, I mean, usually these points at the ends are where things fall apart, but they're all still on there. Nothing is ripped, everything in place. I think these are parasol seams. I'm not entirely sure, but um, I once, tried to sew my own parasol, um, which has been put on hold. Um, I will still be doing that. But um, yeah, I learned the parasol seam and this looks very much like it. I forgot to film an outro, so here's some more delicious footage of the coffee bonnet, as I like to call it. As always, thank you so much for watching. You're very welcome to leave your impressions in the comments. I'd especially like to know how you'd date the parasol, as I myself don't have much knowledge in that area. Apparently unboxing antiques is my new hobby now, so subscribe for more content like this if you like. See you next time.